When I was in college at North Carolina School of the Arts, I had a friend who said, hey, you gotta come see this guy play. And I'm like, who is it? Never heard of him. Okay, go to the concert, sitting there, mind blown. Simply, mind blown. Just, I was in awe. I lived in Mill Valley, and I went to the 7-Eleven on Miller. He had spotted me, and he parked outside the 7-Eleven, little Volkswagen bus that he had, slid the door back, sit on the edge, threw tar out, and when I walked out of the 7-Eleven, he was playing aerial boundaries. I had never heard anything like it ever from anyone. And I'm standing in the 7-Eleven parking lot and my mind is running out my nose in a puddle on the floor. Remember the first time you heard him do it? Okay, well, the first time I heard him do it was there in that parking lot. And I will never be the same. Afterwards, we go to this diner and we just sit and we eat waffles, I think. And I stayed up all night. I couldn't go to sleep because I couldn't believe what I had just heard. I was so excited, I just couldn't even shut my eyes. He was playing, and all of a sudden he was way up here instantly. And the music's great. It seemed like he just knew things. He had that effect on people when they encountered him. At that point, nobody else had done it. That wasn't what you did with the guitar. <laughs> and he uh, delighted in it. We grew up in the most idyllic middle America college town in the Midwest. Our mom and our dad had both been in their school marching band. They encouraged all of us to take music lessons. Michael was instantly drawn to the guitar. We all knew he was talented, but there was always something else, that feeling that he would go far. You know, after he was discovered, it just happened so fast. Everyone who saw Mike play, they knew it was something they'd never seen or heard before, and they loved it. Part of what Michael brought to the guitar world was his innovation, both musically and technically. So a lot's happened since, you know, the early 80s in the guitar world. And a lot of that has happened because of what he did. I grew up in a fairly small town in Oklahoma. One thing about growing up there was having lots of friends who were Texans, and they used to always brag that everything was bigger in Texas. I don't really know why, but I know why now, because I was in Texas uh, shopping for guitars, and I found one. The guy that sold me this said it was a Longhorn model. This is called Because It's There. It's kind of like there was guitar before Michael and then guitar after Michael. Because no one ever thought of doing what he did. Kids that had never been exposed to him, they, they come away with it, uh, wanting to hear more of his music and, and wanting to know more about him. So I feel kind of like, you know, it's a mission that needs to happen. And they have their own little guitar heroes who do those things that Michael started and they need to know the roots of that. My kids, you know, would say, hey, have you seen this one? Hey, Doc, check this one out. Um, and I'd say, yeah, but you know, have you heard of Michael Hedges? Because he started all this stuff. You know, 
know, right now we're an orchestra trying to be one person, trying to be Michael Hedges, and even we're struggling. So it just like blows my mind is that one person could have all these elements, all these rhythmic figures going at the same time. It's like, that just blows my mind. It's like rays of light. You know, there was this, this explosion in the middle that's Michael, and then rays of light going out, and we're just still following that wavelength. Feeling those, the ripples. <laughs> yeah, feeling the ripples and riding that big bang. I really think this was meant to be because I really didn't have a way to express what he meant to me ever. This is a chance to like express who he was and who he could be to somebody. And imagine if I feel this way, if little me feels this way, how many other people feel this way in the world? <laughs>